had a great conversation talking about how universities can work with Ensign. I think uh, one of the major priority areas for, for Ensign uh, and one of our core missions is how do we create opportunities for people to serve? Uh, the next, we're going to highlight some of the student teams that we've worked with over this year. Uh, those are going to be Kashal Saraf and Joel Joseph. So they're going to walk you through what they helped uh, work on while they were working on an Ensign program and share uh, with you a little bit about their product. So I'll hand it over to them. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hi, Jim. Uh, thank you so much. Um, my name is Joel. I'm one of the co-founders of Atomus. I'm Kashal. And um, we're doing some really, really cool stuff by building cybersecurity infrastructure for aerospace and defense companies. And we're really excited to share a little bit about what we've been working on and how Ensign has kind of helped us along the way. Um, so the problem that we're tackling is, as I'm sure you know, there are tens of thousands of cyber attacks that happen on a defense industrial base each and every year. Now, the reason that this happens is because a lot of small and medium-sized defense contractors really struggle with cybersecurity. When you look into the numbers, Roughly about only 45% of them have read the really, really dense, thick NIST 800-171 standards, which is in every Department of Defense contract. And when you look at what is actually being done today, roughly only about 34% of the things that are needed in order to keep defense contractors safe is actually being done. So there's this huge delta between where things are in the defense industrial base when it comes to cybersecurity and where things need to be in order to keep them safe. And with our team uh, at Animus, we've been kind of figuring out how do we help these small and medium-sized companies kind of bridge this delta. And it's one of these really, really interesting dual-use technologies and applications that are very, very interesting because it's a problem that doesn't only affect the aerospace and defense industry, but also all the other industries that need cybersecurity. In working in this space and talking to hundreds of different companies, not only in aerospace and defense, but also end users and customers in the military, what we've realized is that there's a fundamental problem in cybersecurity. In the fact that cybersecurity today is not scalable, and I'll tell you why. Right now, the way we do cybersecurity is kind of built on this custom model, where cybersecurity is kind of done specific for each company. Now, while this works for my really, really smart classmates who now work at Google and Facebook, it really doesn't work well in the model that is needed for small and medium-sized companies. This custom model where essentially a company takes together dozens of different cybersecurity vendors from two-factor authentication to backup and recovery to end malware, and they kind of cobble it together in this stack, it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of integration, it takes a lot of engineering know-how. And when you build a custom, it creates this high cost and increased complexity to the point where a lot of small and medium-sized businesses can't really deal with this. So Trudy Hacking for Defense program and talking to a lot of different companies in the space, my co-founder and I, we kind of realized that, hey, most of these small and medium-sized companies probably don't need custom cybersecurity. So we had this really, really interesting idea. What if instead of building custom cybersecurity for each individual company, we brought together some really, really smart cybersecurity engineers? And we built a really world-class, state-of-the-line cybersecurity solution. And then instead of building a custom for the company after that, and the company after that, we onboarded them to this idea of a cybersecurity infrastructure. And that's kind of the idea that we've been working on. Something that's turnkey, very, very easy to use, and rapidly scalable. So we can get this in the hands of every small and medium-sized defense contractor in the United States. If it sounds like a little bit of a complicated idea, uh, Kaushal will kind of walk you through the demo to show you how easy it is to use. Definitely. Thank you, Joel. So we'll show you how it works and we try to make this very simple. So imagine that if you are a company who wants to get onboarded onto the Admins platform. So we do all the setup and we do everything that needs to be done in the back end previously. But from a user perspective of that company or an employee, this is how it would look. All they would do is download an application and run that application. It's a desktop app and all you have to do is click get started and then you have to confirm to confirm the installation. Once this installs the entire application or the platform, what it does is it creates a secure environment. The cybersecurity in a box piece that Joel just mentioned, it creates that for you on this local machine, right? And once it completes the installation, it's, it's going to ask you to restart. So that brings you, the restart brings you directly into the secure environment. 
So once we get through that, you will see how the secure environment is exactly the same. You see how this is a Windows and an application kind of pops up right back up again. So this every step of the process of setting everything up is automatically done by just following steps on the desktop application. That's how easy it is to onboard. It takes approximately 10 minutes for any employee to be able to onboard to the Anus platform. But once they're onto this, they don't have to care about how we are protecting the network traffic, how we are protecting the data, how we are doing encryption, how we're doing backup and recovery, how we are monitoring everything, how we're doing vulnerabilities, and like all these other things that we're connecting to right now in this installation that's happening that you're seeing right now, right? And all of these backend services are completely set up and maintained by us at Animus. And one of the beautiful things about all of this is that this is so fast, right? But we have to realize that the environment remains exactly the same. You would be able to use PDFs, Microsoft Word, any, any single thing that you would have done normally on your Windows computer, you could do exactly the same things on this computer. Now, this is 80% of the work that needs to be done by any company or any small business that needs to be compliant. But that other 20% is a lot of documentation, policies, procedures, training and awareness, and that takes hours and hours of effort of the company, as well as the individuals you pay to be helping you out for all of this, right? But what we do at Atomis is automate all of this. You don't have to go through every single machine of your computer and answer evidence for every 110 controls. What we do is we automate all of that. As you would see here, there's like a bunch of documentation that we generate for you as a company. So what we're trying to do is this compliance package or security package for these small businesses so they don't have to worry about anything that they're doing in terms of compliance and security. As you would see, there's like deeper implementation, evidence collections, everything's completely automated. Apart from all of that, we also do have an employee handbook that we're gonna show you right now, which kind of speaks to all the policies and procedures that we just told you. So any company who does not have this already can just adopt these and that would be as simple as just getting started. And this is all it takes for a company to get started and start working on a compliant and secure business, right? And that is exactly how simple and easy it is. After this, all, once all the employees are onboarded, that's, that's all, that's all they need. Now, having, having talked about that, I want to show you some key value propositions that we drive by using this platform. As you would have noticed, it hardly takes less than a day for the company users to be able to set this up entirely go through the policies, go through the training and all of that. But if you would have done it custom, it would easily take three to four months for you to set these up because they're like different products. There are about 26, 27 different products that you have to put together to build this environment. Now, because you have to put together so much and spend so much time, the cost is obviously going to be a lot, lot higher because what we have is automation and what we have is standardization. And therefore, we can split out the cost and provide much lower cost to the small businesses across the defense industrial base. And we eliminate the hours of effort of paperwork, as I told, it's automated, right? And we do not change the user experience because that's very, very valuable to every single small defense contractor because they don't care about what's going on other than their own business, right? And apart from all of that, having industry level, industry standard, world-class cybersecurity to these small businesses is one of the key things we are providing by doing standardized solution. We can push patches, we can push updates, we can fix for new threats almost overnight because we have one solution, standardized solution. But what about when you have custom ones? It takes months to be patching every single one of them because you have to figure out what needs to be patched every single time. But for us, it is not that case. And that is how we drive some of the key value propositions. And that is exactly why we've got amazing early traction because some of our customers, small defense contractors, are subcontractors of some of the biggest primes that are there, Channel Atomics, Lockheed, Northrop, Raytheon. There are subcontractors who are using this right now who are part of their supply chain. And not only that, we got interest from commercial world in terms of VCs. So we're backed by investors who were very early investors in Snowflake, Robinhood, Android, who are huge companies today. Now, having said all of this, we do realize that Ensign has been a huge impact. And I'm going to let Joel talk you about how Ensign has been impactful during our journey. Thanks, Joshua. Um, Ensign has been there from the beginning for us, and it was actually a large part of the reason why we are focusing on defense problems. Very honestly, uh, if Joshua and I didn't meet in the Hacking for Defense program uh, while we were run doing a course uh, at the University of Southern California, we probably would be working at a fan company trying to optimize ads. But by virtue of us getting exposed to the Hacking for Defense program on these really, really interesting niche problems that, again, are 
kind of on the edge of technology that the military is facing today and the rest of the world is going to be facing tomorrow, we kind of started thinking about these things and seeing, is there a way that we can make these things better? And is there a way that we can solve these problems so that America can win next war, that we can keep our industry safe? And from the Hacking for Defense program, it not only allowed us a really, really great place where we could find like-minded people and we can make a lot of friends in the space, but it also gave us this opportunity to go and work with the military and find end users and customers. Uh, you know, when I talk to my friends who work at all these big tech companies, not a single one of them actually have been to a military base. They probably don't know the first thing about the military. I didn't personally, uh, but being able to go to a military base, understand the problems, talk to people, see how they do things and be like, well, that doesn't really make sense. We can build something in a day that fixes that. It was very, very, I guess, different than say me working at a big company and kind of being way abstracted from any actual real problems. The Hacking for Defense program was really, really instrumental in giving us that background knowledge and giving us this problem set and the people who were facing it and kind of just be able to iterate and move fast. Uh, outside the Hacking for Defense program, Kaushik and I, you know, we kind of started keep, uh, kept on being in the space. And it was actually to Ensign where we ended up getting our first government contract. While it was a small amount, it was enough for us to kind of look at it and be like, hey, this could actually be something cool. And it allowed us to kind of figure out how to go full time on it by raising private venture capital and figuring out a way to think about how do we sell commercially while at the same time figuring out how we can solve dual use problems that both the military and the commercial market have. Today, Ensign is still there with us. Uh, they've helped us guide us through the process of working with the military. It's a very, very hard place to be when you're completely new, you don't have any new connections. But one of the things I think is really, really valuable about Ensign is it's kind of a force multiplier in the fact that it's bringing a lot of really, really smart and talented individuals who traditionally wouldn't have looked at anything in aerospace and defense and essentially saying, hey, here's a problem. These are really, really hard problems. If you have an idea or a solution, here's who to get in contact with and try doing something. Um, Ensign has been there from day one to all the way today. And we look at them as an amazing partner and we are so grateful for them. But yeah, thank you so much for listening to our presentation. Let us know if you have any questions or reach out. <laughs>